Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I am Brad with Fine Tuned and today we are wrapping up this eight speed install on this 335D. So this is part two. If you haven't seen part one, go ahead and watch it. The link is in the description below. And today we'll be installing the adapter plate. We'll be installing the flywheel, the transmission, oil lines. We'll be wrapping up the wiring harness along with the shifter on the inside of this vehicle. And at the end of this video, we'll be doing a test drive on this eight speed just so you guys can see how smooth it is. So go ahead and sit back and relax and uh, watch the video. Thank you. All right, so we have the adapter plate in. There's uh, just two bolts that we put on the bottom just to hold it in place. And then we put these two longer dowels in its spot. And uh, now we're time, we're, it's time to put on the flywheel right now. So um, it doesn't matter really which direction it goes, just as long as you get this um, reluctant ring in place and then um, there's a bigger hole on this, so just line it up in a spot, and then we can put on the flywheel. So, um, PMC supplies you new bolts to go in here, and we're just putting some thread locker. So we'll put all these in and then torque it down to 121 newton meters. Okay, flywheel's on, all on there. And uh, torque this back. Next, we're going to uh, put the transmission on. We're ready for it. Sweet. Thank you. So, we finally got all the bell housing bolts in the transmission. Um, transmission's obviously up in there, the 8 speed is. Uh, looks beautiful. Um, we did have some issues getting the very top bolts and uh, the key to that was using a swivel head Allen, a 10 millimeter Allen for the tops, but um, finally got everything in, it looks great. Our next step is doing the torque converter bolts in here. So there is six bolts and um, PMC supplies you with some Allen head bolts. So we'll put those in next with some Loctite on them and get all those done in there. And then after that, we'll probably do the wiring harness right here. We'll switch out the pins and switch to the eight speed plug. And uh, after that's done, we'll get the um, transmission mount bolted up. We'll get the exhaust back on and everything's done under here. And the final step will be doing all the wiring up top, which is super straightforward and simple on this. So um, we'll get to that right now. Okay, so um, up top here, we got the cowling moved out of the way. And uh, basically what we need to do is we need to get to this ECU box up here. So we'll unlock it, unlock, unlock, and then we gotta pull these tabs out of the way. Boom, 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 boom. Come on, work with me. There we go. All right, so now that the cover's out of the way, um, we're focused on these, this, black plug up here. So basically disconnect this right here. And what we'll do is we'll connect the, the female side to this right here. And then we'll connect the male side to this. And that's how you wire it up. Very simple, straightforward. And this CAN TCU will live in this ECU box. We have, we actually have to modify um, this carrier in here, we'll just cut off this black, not the black plastic, but the white plastic back there. And then there should be a little cap in there and we'll feed the rest of the wiring harness through that hole in there and it'll go into the interior. This is for an OBD plug and this one's for the shifter. And these are the two wiring harnesses that go inside into the vehicle. But that's pretty much the rest of the wiring that needs to be done on this vehicle. Now that we have this connected, um, actually what I'm going to do is going to disconnect this 
That way it's disconnected for when we do the wiring down there. So we'll raise the vehicle up right now and we'll swap out the six HP plug to the eight speed plug, which is this plug right here. And um, yeah, once we do that, we could button up the underneath side and get the transmission mount in there and um, everything should be good to go. So we'll do that right now. Okay, so now we're going to disassemble this connector. It's kind of very tricky. Um, I actually forget how it goes, but we're going to do something here to get this off. So basically, I think what we need to do is we have to push in these detents on the side here. There's one. Oh, there was one. There's one. And you need to apply some back pressure. So I'm like pinching it this way in order to get this, this off here. I think we're caught up on this one. There we go. Come on. Okay, so that's off. Um, you can see the detents right here that you have to push in. So now we'll take this 90 degree elbow out. There we go. So now that clamshell is out. Basically what we need to do is we need to get to the main wiring of this and we basically have to rewire it. So I'm going to cut the zip tie off. All right, so now on this wiring harness here, we have these two can lines, okay? And these can bus lines splice into just can high and can low on the transmission. So with the eight speed, what we're going to do is we'll just keep one of these pairs on the actual connections. So we'll cut these two pairs here and we'll keep one of them together, okay? And what we're going to do is this one is we're going to splice in um, two other crimp connections in here and then use that as can, can two. So this will be can one high and low and the other one will be can two. Um, next, what we need to do is we have to depin this whole plug here. And I am using a, I don't even know, this just came in a deep pinning set. You could buy these off Amazon, but basically it's a tool to go in there and de detent the plugs in here to pull them all out. So um, before we do that, we have to push in on this white tab here and unlock it. So that's how you unlock it. And we'll start out with, we'll start out with this blue one here. And there's a lot of wires on the back of this. So we'll just go in a circle and deep pin all of them. So we'll start out with this blue one. We'll push it in, detent it, and then pull out. So there's one, we'll do the brown one next. Push in, and then pull out. And we'll do that to all of them here. Okay, now that we're all deep pinned, um, basically, so for the eight speed transmission, you need can one high and low, which will be this one, can two high and low, which will be this one. You need your main power source, which is this thick red one, right here. You need your ground, which is this brown one right here. And then the only other wire you need is the green one which is your wake up signal. All the rest of these wires will not be used. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this black one here for my can two, and then I'll take this yellow one here for my can two connection as well. 
and then all the rest of these can be cut staggered that way um, you don't know them they're all dead anyway so it really doesn't matter and what we'll do is we'll just tape these up in here and not use them so these are the rest of the wires that are needed so we could literally just pin these into the new plug um, on this can too high and low what we'll do is we'll strip back um, both of these and we'll wire this yellow one on and then we'll wire this black one on that way we still reuse this pin and the silicone on it um, if you didn't want to do that um, the kit comes with some pins and the silicone rubber sealant on it that way you could just splice in your own but um, I like reusing it it saves some time and it's quick and easy for me to do so that's that we'll do some wiring and put the 8 speed connector on it okay so I have these wired up nice and neatly um, I mean everything is taped up so that way if anything does rub through it doesn't ground I even taped up the ones that I cut down here so now we have to wire this up and I have the wiring diagram on my phone here and you could see obviously we got a yellow and a black on both of these so we need to isolate or figure out which one is can high one and which one is can two high and low as well so in order to isolate that we have to do a continuity test from um, these to the OBD plug up top so we'll go ahead and lower it down and um, we'll use the multimeter to see which one is CAN1 and then we could put it in the right spot on the AHP plug. So we'll plug this in again. And now we have, this is our OBD plug. So I'll bring this back down or I'll bring it down and raise the vehicle up. So we'll set the multimeter to um, continuity. This one's on the ohms one. So basically if we touch these two together, it'll beep. So if we go over here, we'll ho hold it on the yellow on the OBD plug. And then we'll find out which one is can one on this side so so on this plug right here it beeps so that's can one and we'll go to black just to make sure which they will and it beeps so this one is can one for sure the one without these splices on them so this will be our can one which will correspond our cam one on this diagram corresponds to um, pin five and pin six. So that's good. So what we'll do is we'll grab the eight speed plug. We'll get it out of its little baggie, to unlock it. And then, I don't know if you guys could see this, but there's numbers on this plug. Pin five is way up there and pin four is right next to it. So our black is on pin five of CAN bus one. So that would be this connector here. So our black's going in there. And then our yellow for CAN one is on pin six, which is directly below it. And then we'll put in our CAN bus two. And there's that, that's how you wire that up. So basically what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to tape this up really nice and firm and um, we'll put this shroud, not the shroud, but the lock back on it. And um, yeah, that's how you wire it, nice and simple. Just make sure all these clip in really nice and that you lock it afterwards. And just do a pull test on, make sure none of them come out. So that's that.
All right, so we got the wiring harness um, back on and it's locked in its position up here. I don't know if you could see that, but um, it's right there locked in. And now we're just putting on the transmission bracket right now, which bolts right up with the eight speed. And um, we already bolted up the drive shaft, so that's in its place. So we're pretty much done down here, besides doing the uh, transmission oil cooler lines, which I have a half inch line coming in the mail today for that. So hopefully we get it today and we can get that knocked out. All right, so in order to get this trans swap to work, um, we have to do some coding on this vehicle. Um, if you could see, this is the parameters that we have to change. So basically we just have to go in here and switch them to not active. So I'm going to pull up Pro Tool and connect it to the Bluetooth connection. And it'll take a while for it to load on here. Sorry for the gong. Oh, it just went away. Nice. So the gauge sweep, we're connected. We have to go into the CAS module, which is right here, car access system. We have to go to coding. And then we got to edit the coding. And then um, just go into expert, hit search. And we are searching for um, the top one, A-U-S-W-E-R-T. A U S W E R T, and we are looking for P H W. So P H W is the stop one. We're going to disable that, confirm, and then the other one that we're looking for is A B Z U G. A B Z U G P lock, and we're going to disable that. Confirm, and that's it. We'll just finalize this, finishing up, coding, clearing the fault codes, and that's it. That's all the coding that you have to do on this. So that's sweet. And um, since I have the CAN TCU plugged in, we're already showing neutral because the transmission, the neutral screw is screwed in. So. That's a good sign that it's communicating with the vehicle. The next step will be wiring all the, just the OBD and the shifter wiring into the cabin area and hooking it all up. And then obviously we still have to do the transmission lines, um, throw a new pan on it and then fill up the transmission with fluid. So we'll get to doing that right now. All we need to do is bring this OBD wire and um, the shifter cable through the cabin or through the firewall. And also I modified the um, ECU bracket that holds the ECU in. So I removed the ECU and then just cut off this bracket right here just so that we have some space for this module to go in there. So um, I have my fish ran through the firewall there. So it's through the interior now. And what I'll do is I'll just tape up um, the wiring here and then pull it on through um, very carefully because you don't want to rip off this connector at all, but um, so that'll get pulled through as well. Another thing that I do want to pull through is for the unit, there is a USB cable and basically this USB cable goes on the CAN TCU right here. And this is just so that we could do some diagnostic or change any settings that we may want to change. So this will also go through the cabin area too. So we'll get to it right now. So we are on the inside of the vehicle here. We have ran all the wiring through the firewall, which is a pretty simple process. You just run it right through the DDE box. And um, down below here, we have the shifter wiring harness here. And then we have the diagnostic port. So this is for OBD uh, readings and also XHP flash. And then we have the USB for the CAN TCU. All these just have to be ran through and they will reside in the glove box behind like the fuse box area. All the wires are pretty much hidden. And uh, all we really need to do is run the shifter cable to the shifter in the center console. And that's pretty much it for the inside. I mean, you don't really have to run a whole lot of wiring on the inside of this. So it's, it's really nice and easy. 
All right, so I just got the transmission lines wrapped up and I put the transmission pan on this vehicle. So um, down here, it's pretty much ready to go. The exhaust is on, the heat shields are on. So um, it's looking good down here. Um, we should be able to fill up the transmission and get this thing fired up and running. We're just filling up the transmission right now with the ZF eight speed fluid. Um, so basically filled up until it starts overflowing, then I'll go up there and start the car and uh, cycle through the gears, get it up to 2000 RPM so the torque converter can get filled up. And um, yeah, hopefully all is good, fingers are crossed. All right, so we are completely done with this build. We have the G30 uh, shifter in here and I did make this trim here. It's like an eight out of 10, I mean, it, it's, I'm definitely not an artist like making trim stuff like this, but it's functional, it works, it looks decent for this car, so I'm really happy with that. Um, but yeah, this thing is all done, and uh, we'll take you guys on a test drive with the new eight speed transmission. This does have a JR 3.1 tuning on it, so basically it's stock turbos with a larger fuel pump, an R90 fuel pump. Um, so we also did a tune upgrade on this vehicle, so um, it runs really good. Good. It's very fast. It's nice and responsive. Um, I came and feel the vehicle shift. We're in third gear right now. Fourth gear. Fifth gear. Sixth gear, and we're at like 43 miles per hour. So I mean, it just on to the next gear. It's very smooth, very efficient. We'll do a couple um, quick acceleration so you guys can kind of see and hear um, what this sounds like. We're in sport mode and um, we'll just do a light throttle. It's 34 degrees so um, traction is definitely an issue on these summer tires. And I'm about 50% throttle so it's not all the way mashed out. It's on to the next gear, on to the next gear. That's what I love about these eight-speed transmissions. It's just so responsive. Um, you won't get the six-speed that came in this car that responsive. And yeah, you get a bump and feel economy too, which is really nice. And um, I'm sure it's just overall better for the health of the engine because it's less stress on the engine itself. I mean, you got those eight gears to fly through. So with the uh with the eight-speed transmission, basically there's um, three different settings for it. So there's the Eco Pro setting, which just automatically bumps it to the next gear, and then there's a Comfort setting, and then there's a Sport setting. Um, you could change whichever one of these settings that you want to be as a default. Um, but when you hit the traction control button, it will automatically put the transmission in Sport, which is geared towards like rev hangs, and it just shifts um, a little bit faster, and it just lets the RPMs hang out and uh, kind of hit the rev limiter a little bit. Um, so how to put it in sport, we just hit the traction control button right here and that puts it in sport. And if you see on the instrument cluster here, it says sport. And then it's also on the traction control um, stage one setting, I guess. So um, we can slap in sport and then give it a go. 